Hi everyone. This presentation is going to be on free body diagrams or force diagrams. We're going to need to know uh, how to apply these and identify them and use them uh, for some following uh, presentations and problems involving Newton's three laws of motion, uh, specifically forces. So a free body diagram identifies all the forces acting on just one object. Let's start with a box on a table. In any of these situations, <clears throat> the first thing we need to do is identify the forces that are uh, acting on the object that we're talking about. So in this case, we're talking about the box on the table. So we want to identify the forces acting on the box. Just a side note, unless you are told otherwise, you can assume we are on Earth with a gravity at 9.8 meters per second squared down for these problems. So in this particular case with the box on the table, we have two forces. Force due to gravity and a support force from the table there's a special name for this support force um, <clears throat> whenever you have a surface pressing against an object, we call that the normal force or F sub N. So when an object presses against a surface, the surface will press back against the object with an equal and opposite force. This probably sounds familiar. This is Newton's third law of motion. So if you're wondering why uh, the term normal is used, this interaction between the object and the surface happens at 90 degrees or perpendicular or normal from your geometry class, that term that they use for a vector or array that's in contact with a surface at 90 degrees. Okay, now that we know the two forces that are acting on the object in this case, the second thing we need to do is label them in the diagram. I'm just going to redraw this diagram over here so you can see what we're going to do. So we have the force due to gravity going down. We'll label that as force sub G for gravity. And we have the normal force, which is the surface pressing against the object at 90 degrees. Label that F sub N. Now, these are equal and opposite forces represented using vectors. So the vectors need to be the same length and in opposite directions to each other. So just the eyeball test, the vector for gravity looks to be the same length as the vector for the normal force. So the third thing in this case is to just show the free body diagram all by itself or the force diagram. So to do that, we're just going to identify 
the object um, as a single mass or point. So we start with this box, but we can represent the box by just drawing uh, a dot and labeling it M. Now, with this dot here that represents the object, its center of mass, we're just going to label the forces that are acting on it. So it's these same two forces, but we're just going to label them acting on this dot. So again, the force due to gravity straight down, and the normal force going straight up, opposite gravity. This would be my force diagram. Now, when we look at this force diagram or free body diagram, we can see that the only forces that are acting are acting in the vertical direction. So we need to uh, write a term called the sum of the forces equals MA. Now, in this case, we only have forces in the Y direction. Now, if we identify the forces that are acting in the y direction, we have the force normal going up and the force due to gravity going straight down. We know that those are equal and opposite. So the force normal, because it's going up, is positive minus the force due to gravity. It's minus because this is going down. This vector is going down. When we add those together, it equals M times A, but the A is zero, nothing is accelerating. Uh, there is no net force happening in this situation. And we can see that if Fn minus Fg equals zero, then that means, or it's a little bit of a proof that Fn is equal to Fg. All right, now I'm just going to give you a few other examples. Um, I'll kind of draw the sketch of the, uh, the actual uh, situation, and then I'll show you uh, the end result force diagram or free body diagram. So this first example, what if we took a mass, tied it to a string, and then tied the other end of the string to the ceiling and just let it hang there? So <clears throat> this would be a sketch of the actual situation. And if we wanted to do a free body diagram for this, we represent the mass with a single point, label it M, we have a force up, and we have the force due to gravity down. When these things happen on Earth or on a planet with gravity, you're always going to have a force uh, down due to the gravity of the planet. In this case, the force up is being transferred through this uh, cable or string. We have a special name for those kinds of forces. Those are called tension. Just to talk about tension and the force due to gravity a little bit more, uh, T in this case stands for tension. This is a force that's transferred through a string or some type of string-like material. Some other examples that you should be aware of, uh, the tendons that connect your muscles to your bones and, and joints and all that, those would be uh, situations where you could have tension uh, identified as a force being trans transferred through something like a string or a cable. Um, some other things, uh, if you have uh, metal wires, for example, uh, if you have braces, those metal wires would have uh, a tension uh, applied in them to try to straighten out your teeth or move your teeth in a certain direction. Um, lots of things that, that can fall into this category. All right, so anytime there's tension, you can think of different materials like this. Now, the force due to gravity uh, 
is also known as weight. So just remember that weight is mass times gravity. So when we refer to weight, we'll write WT. Uh, and whenever we write that, it's mass times gravity. So a lot of times uh, in the future, you'll see me kind of replace this and just go right to mg, right? Now that does not mean milligrams, that means mass times gravity. Now in this other example, we have something that's similar to uh, the previous example where you have a mass uh, being, you know, hung by a string attached to the ceiling. In this case, we have a sign, so that's the mass we're talking about, but there's two strings holding it up, okay? So we need to draw a force diagram for this. So before I go to my free body diagram, I just want to uh, point out a quick little sketch um, over here to identify what's happening, right? Each one of these cables has tension in it, okay? So this uh, cable on the, the left is supporting it and the cable on the right is also supporting it. I can kind of see based on this uh, picture because there's no angles here, these are at 90 degrees uh, and they seem to be spread apart equally uh, that each cable is probably supporting half the weight. Uh, in a situation like this, you can make that assumption uh, because you're not given any other information. So that's, uh, that's what's going to happen with this. I'm going to take that information to draw my free body diagram. Another thing from my quick sketch, you can see that the length of these two vectors for the tension, if the eyeball test shows that they're about half the length of the weight vector. Okay, so once again, represent the object or the mass with a dot, label it M. Another thing that you can start labeling is A equals zero in this case. It's not moving, it's not accelerating. Uh, so that's something that you can start identifying. We have the weight going straight down, MG. Here's the length of that vector. And we have two vectors uh, going up. We have the tension left, and the tension right. Each one of these vectors is half the magnitude of the weight, and we can add these two vectors head to tail so that they can uh, represent equal and opposite the weight. Again, we only have vertical forces, so when we write our sum of the equation, uh, sum of the forces in the y direction equation equals ma, a is zero, what are the forces in the y direction? We have T left plus T right minus Mg equals zero. Therefore, T left plus T right equals Mg. That would be my sum of the forces equation. Okay, here in this example, we have a block on a surface and there's a force pulling it in this direction to the right. There's no friction in this, in this case. So take a minute, pause the video, see if you can come up with the free body diagram for this situation. Okay, if you ended up with a diagram that looked like this, great job. That's uh, what you needed. There are three forces acting on the object. We have the weight straight down, mass times gravity, and then the surface is pressing up at 90 degrees, the force normal. To the right, or in the x direction, we only have one force. There's no friction, so there's nothing resisting this force. If we have a force, then we will have an acceleration. So when we write our sum of the, uh, sum of the forces equations, if we start with the y direction, the sum of the forces in the y direction equals zero. There's no acceleration in the y direction, which means the force normal is equal to the weight. But the sum of the forces in the x direction equals ma. The only force we have in the x direction is this force f. So 